Welcome back to Real on the Real. I'm Dior. Hi, I'm Yuchenna. And tonight we're going to review Real Housewives, of, Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 14, episode two. Mm -hmm. um, this season, like we said before, we have a lot of new characters. So, I mean, it was just a lot of different scenes in this particular mm -hmm. episode. Mm -hmm. um, but we started off at Sanya's Sonia's house mm -hmm. um, with her parents and her sister, her mom and her sister. So we find out that they're living in a house with nine people. Yes. <laughs> a third of them kids, <laughs> little yes. kids. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's just crazy. And they plan to do that for a year. <laughs> if they could survive it already, we saw friction between the moms and the sisters, which is normal. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But it's not something to have in the house that you're living in. You need people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see how that goes. But I mean, we didn't really um, get a lot from them this season. I mean, this episode. This episode, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's really the only scene where they were in. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, but those um, beef patties must be really good because they were fighting over them. <laughs> Right. <laughs> they should have showed the brand <laughs> so they try to get them. Right. They had three. She said they had three boxes of them. Um, <laughs> so I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's just how it is. Like when you're in a family, like you just fight over little stuff, especially when you're living together. Mm -hmm. And her sister didn't seem too like happy about living there. No. So. I mean, they uprooted their lives for her, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wonder what's keeping her and her husband so busy, though. I don't know. I mean, I can understand him because he's an ex-NFL um, champ. So maybe he's doing like, you know, ESPN type sports gigs. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe she's talking and doing speeches. I'm not sure, but they, they're acting like they're super busy. <laughs> <laughs> but so is Drew, but I doubt that. Well, yeah. anyways, <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll wait. Me, we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, so next we're at Sheree's house and Kenya comes over. It's gorgeous. It's, that house, it, that's you know, one of the best houses I've seen on any <laughs> Royal House Buys franchise. I'm about that to pull a candy. Where did she get that money from? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was... The decor was phenomenal. Every room, the chandeliers, the pillows, the chairs, the, you know, <laughs> everything was beautiful. She has great taste. But where did she get the money from? Like, what is she <laughs> doing? <laughs> she by Sheree. <laughs> Girl, I need to, I haven't checked on the website this year. I need to check on the website before the next show to see what she got going. Because right. I think she never released anything. I think she I did update the website like maybe two years ago before the oh. pandemic with like it seemed like she was advertised like um selling workouts or something oh not okay. the jogger oh, yes okay I can but, see yeah that. like some kind of workout package she did when she um when she was last on she, I think she talked about um doing workouts okay yeah I think so something like that I mean she looks like she you know lifts she has muscle so yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm gonna check before the next episode. Yes. <laughs> see what she's doing. Let us know to get the money. Um, but yeah, Kenya come, came over. I'm surprised that Kenya threw absolutely no shade, no Zero. hate. First time ever. <laughs> ever. <Yay. Good> job, <laughs> Kenya. <laughs> but it didn't last long. Like she started like talking about everybody, like gossiping about what happened. At the I, yeah. At the thing. Yeah. yeah. I think in her and Marlo just like, they have love, hate, mostly hate. And they were both given as well as they were receiving. So mm -hmm. you know, I got to stick up with my girl. Penny, so. <laughs> <laughs> she talked about Drew too. Like, so well, Drew and her, like, come on, that was <laughs> hell last year. <laughs> um, apparently, uh, I guess Sheree and Drew mm -hmm. have a, assistant in common my question is first of all why does drew have so many assistants like what is That's what, what i'm talking about <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors with these two like i they're liars i don't trust them <laughs> what does she need three assistants for no mm -mm. i think i've seen her in one like lifetime some one series i thought i saw advertisement with her in it 
and she wasn't the main star. So do you remember seeing that? Was it recently? I think it was recently. Were they like running through some woods or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't watch the movie, but yeah, yeah I saw that. I think mm-hmm. there were like a couple of people mm-hmm. that normally don't act that were in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I can, can barely remember, remember. But yeah, I think it was a lifetime something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so she started gossiping. Well, they talked about the assistant that they shared that Sheree says she uses occasionally. Right. Um, and apparently he was telling Drew Sheree's business. Mm -hmm. we don't really know the details about that but the crazy thing is is that I guess Drew told Candy and Candy told Kenya and then Kenya (laughs) told told Sheree (laughs) I was just like whoa this is what what um what Drew should have done just like Candy told her is call Sheree Mm -hmm. and tell her what's going on but it was only like I think when they were showing the flashbacks it was like two days ago three days Mm -hmm. ago so Mm -hmm. it's like you know if you're not really close to someone you're probably not gonna call them that quickly you know but you know how news travels (laughs) that's true (laughs) and that assistant is a hot mess like first of all I think he has button plants I really do paying attention (laughs) when they were working out and then they ended and he went and grabbed his towel and was wiping off his fake sweat. Mm-hmm. It looked like he had button plants. I mean, okay. I could be wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not paying attention. Um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, that's what they did there. They got Senya on the phone. Yes, she seemed like she was just ready to get out. Maybe it's just the way they edited it, but like they were right. really finished with the conversation. She's like, okay, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, I got things to do. <laughs> um and then next we see drew and ralph um they're talking like okay so is this going to be their whole storyline yes yes girl they, just they like got- tampa was the whole storyline last season yes so every season there's like this little incident that happens right before the season starts <laughs> and we just carry it all the way through right yeah because they don't have a real storyline like if her and kenya didn't argue last season drew would have had no storyline but her and her husband's relationship that's it i mean but give us more than that like like i mean there needs to be yeah. a lot of ups and downs in the relationship so yeah. we can really be into it but this mm-hmm. one thing that you don't seem too pressed for because there's no way you would still be in my house and I don't know why you went to Tampa <laughs> or oh. who you went to see. You know, like, why am I dragging it out this long if I'm not really going to press you to, to get the answers for me? Right, right, yes. It just doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. Um, so this one is about the assistant. Um, her husband says that he fired the assistant but still talks to her, apparently. Yeah, like, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't admit that. He wouldn't admit that he still talked to her. He said he fired. I thought, he, fired. He, I thought yeah. he did say like he was like, "Do you want me to stop talking to her? Is oh, that what you'd like me to do?" Okay. But he never said, "Yeah, I'm still communicating." Like, if what's the difference? You fire her, like, and you're still talking to her. That means like nothing. You didn't what's do anything. The point, like, you only just hired her, so it's not like she has to, you know, you have to call her to figure out some things that mm-hmm. you know with your business or whatever she was assisting you with. Right. And then you repeat exactly what the argument was to the assistant, meaning that you guys have a pretty deep relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. yeah, So when when Drew said that people said that he gaslights her, he does. (laughs) Oh, my God. When she talked about the assistant, he's like, she's 52. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. (laughs) No, no. I mean, um, Candy's husband is 49. He looks fantastic. So Mm -hmm. that means absolutely nothing. Yeah. You know, and he is gaslighting her to the highest level. And she looks like a dodo bird, you know, because it seems like she's eating it up. But then she realizes that he's manipulating her. I would not trust him as far as I could throw him and you can't throw him too far because he put on a lot of weight since last season <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot trust this man he is a manipulator mm-hmm. and yeah I just I don't like him and I felt bad because like you're saying she used the analogy of like being in a tumble dryer yeah um, just like he kind of confuses her so she doesn't know. like that's crazy you know like if you can recognize that he's just throwing things around saying things 
to throw you kind of off track so you don't really know what's going on like that's crazy yeah and since you know he's doing that you should be able to stop him like Mm -hmm. you realize that this is happening so you should be able to keep your wits about him and be like no you're you're trying to this you're lying to me this is what you're trying to do so please stop Mm -hmm. you know she but she just allows him to do that for some reason um we go back to Sheree's house Mm -hmm. and Sheree's mom is at her house which if you can recall like in 2020 Mm -hmm. during the pandemic she her mom was missing no Um, I didn't know that mm -hmm. she had posted on social media for people to like help find her mom she was missing for like two and a half weeks and she said she they weren't initially worried because her mom is kind of a free spirit and sometimes she goes on vacation but it was like the longest they had um not had contact with her um so I think they found her about a little over two weeks later um, in Ohio so she was missing from Georgia and then oh oh, in Ohio Mm -hmm. wow and I guess apparently what I saw for some of the news articles was that her mom her mom and all three of her children were living with her like at the beginning of the pandemic um so I don't know if her mom just kind of left because of everything too much but Mm -hmm. yeah so it was good to see that you know she was there maybe Mm -hmm. she's there with her again um and we saw her daughter at first I I was because I forgot she had an older daughter Mm -hmm. I remember she had the two with her ex-husband right um and I remember them being like you know like browner skin so Mm -hmm. I was like who and and younger um probably like maybe fresh out of college now or something like that I was like who is this girl Mm -hmm. and why doesn't she want because I don't think I saw any I didn't catch the label or anything um Mm -hmm. but I was like why wouldn't she want Sherry to hear her podcast and then I realized that she I forgot like I remember she had an older daughter right Mm -hmm. um so uh we go back to Candy and Todd I just feel like no one has like a solid story. That's why we're like jumping from scene to scene and mm-hmm. nothing's really connected. Uh-huh. Um, we but know- I think it's okay. It's only episode two. So I like that we're getting to see into everyone's lives a little bit. You know, I love that Sheree and um, Kenya got, were getting along, you know, mm-hmm. and I do want to see more. I've always liked seeing um, Candy and Todd's relationship. So I'm glad they're continuing because they seem like they have this pretty stable relationship, but now it seems a little shaky with everything that they're talking about. Yeah, but it just, it was just kind of random to me. So, so they're mm-hmm. at their house and they're talking about um, Candy's, she has a Broadway play mm-hmm. um, called Thoughts of a Colored Man. A Black Man. I thought it was Thoughts of a Black Man. Oh, maybe. I don't know why I put colored on here. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have known about it. I would have tried to see it on Broadway. You maybe know, still, I it's doubt the, it, but maybe it's yeah. still um, running. Because I mean, yeah, this was probably like the end of last year that they were filming. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I know they filming late, so maybe, maybe it's mm-hmm. still out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's kind of like told Todd that she needs help. <laughs> around the house and then he like goes on vacations whenever he wants to which again I'm like what what's up with that you know she's never there she's always working so I know she doesn't doesn't expect him to stay at home you know but I it is a little suspicious (laughs) I mean maybe it's not maybe he's just going out with his boys but but when she asked him like he was supposed to be going to Miami he was kind of vague about that yeah yeah I'm gonna choose to trust you um Todd (laughs) <laughs> until you show us otherwise I'm gonna believe you're a good guy <laughs> um and then they started to show us like their pool that they are remodeling mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the process of remodeling <laughs> and that's when we find out that Todd has a apartment in New Jersey mm-hmm. that apparently he shared with his ex-girlfriend and he ended up buying her out of it right um, so he has this property and I guess Candy wants him to get rid of it, Mm -hmm. Um, but he feels like, or he wants to keep it. Right. Um, So I think that's part, maybe that's going to come up a little more during the season because he did mention it later in the episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's kind of what's going on with Candy and Todd. Yeah. 
but you know, no, it doesn't, no major red flags. So. No, no, no. I mean, they are a power couple because they are like, their hands are in everything. You mm-hmm. know, she does, she's done like several plays, you know, they have the restaurants. She's like a regular on chai. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, and she has her performing and Todd does a lot of the renovations. He manages and runs the re- restaurants. And then he used to do production work. Um, I don't know if he's still doing that or if he's too busy with the restaurants mm-hmm. to do that, but they, they work well together. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. That's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Um, we see Marlo visit the candy factory and mm-hmm. this is kind of like just awkward to me <laughs> because yeah. she goes she sees um, Candy's doing a photo shoot and you know she thanks Candy for well she talks about like raising her nephews mm-hmm. and she thanks Candy for you know being the only person that sends them cash apps for you know major milestones in their lives yeah and she's like but I need more like I need Mm-hmm. I was like, damn. Them. But then she explained it. it. Over. Yeah, I get, I get it. She wants to have more of a relationship, you know. That's and I know, <laughs> I know. But she's she's putting it out there, you know. And she, Marla was a complete bitch before, and I think because she was aligning herself with Nini, who was another bitch, mm-hmm. that she kind of took on that persona and was really mean and rude to people. And now she kind of has to walk that back. And try to become like real friends and have relationships with these other women. And it's going to take time. And she started doing that like a couple seasons ago. Mm-hmm. And now that Nini is no longer going to be on the show, she realizes that she really needs to build these relationships. And it's never too late, I think, as long as you're sincere. And she seems like she is because she has those, you know, her two um, nephews. Yeah. And I can understand her wanting to be more in a family atmosphere with Candy and I completely Todd. understand. But mm-hmm. the way she mm-hmm. should have asked us to say, hey, you know, I'm realizing I need a lot more support. I know we haven't always had a good relationship. Mm-hmm. I would really like it if, you know, we could spend more time with your, like that. Not just to so say, you know, you that need to buy that. that over. <laughs> Well, I've, I've had my nephews for two years and you never invited me over to a movie night. Mm-hmm. I, I love that Candy said you need to be the friend that you want to be, like that that you want to have. Like you need to be that friend mm-hmm. before you expect other people to be that. Right, yeah, that was, and then she realized that, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Maybe they'll develop more of mm-hmm. a relationship. I mean, yeah. Marlo's nephews are teenagers and I mean I think Candy's older children are in New York mm-hmm. and then her youngest two are very young but yeah we'll see how that goes and I liked how um Candy well like um Candy was like well you never invite me over and then uh Marlo was like well you can come over tonight and then Candy's was like uh I gotta go wash off with this makeup <laughs> I was like oh my yeah she did a quick dip on that yeah mm-hmm. uh so we see I think you mentioned this scene already drop it with Drew yeah a little workout session five second workout session which I was I guess I'm really confused about this program because I think she, when she explained it on the last episode she did say that they have some like in-person workouts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was that an in-person workout where like I think so I think like in- I think it's going to be like online where people can do the workout with them okay. online. It's taped and okay. then they'll just do it with, and which is like, everyone's doing that. So mm-hmm. I think that's what she meant by in person. Okay. We're not, yeah. Cause we're not going to be there with them, but like, uh, she should have said online workouts. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Ralph tells Drew to like free herself up. They were going to have, um, he was going to have a surprise for her. Mm-hmm. And Drew asked, you know, well, does this mean that we have to put our issues on the back burner? And he mm-hmm. says that he would like for them to kind of put their issues aside um, and get back to them, which is, I, I think that's where like men go wrong. Cause I feel like a lot of men have this issue with women is like, there's an issue. They don't really address the issue. Mm-hmm. They want to talk about the issue later but I want you to be happy with me. So I'm going to do something nice. And then right. you get really upset when I don't really appreciate something nice because I really want to go back to this issue. <laughs> so it's right. just like, yeah. there's an order of events. 
Mm-hmm. We had the issue, we resolved the issue, then you do something nice. And they right. Right. <laughs> but they don't want to resolve, they want to hear us talk. So they rather just <laughs> well, you won't hear us that. talk after you spend a whole bunch of money. Like <laughs> right. hear me talk while we at the house. Right, Let's right. Resolve it, then spend your money and have a good time. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I don't understand why that's so hard. <laughs> but um, so yeah, so so. We're, we're going to see later how that dinner goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the guys meet up at Blaze. Mm-hmm. So it's we were at Blaze. Huh? Remember we, went, we were at Blaze. We went last summer. We never put up the video, um, but we went. And yeah, it was, it was fun. It wasn't exactly what we thought it was um, because it was in a, like a strip mall, but the food was good. Mm-hmm. Um, the food. The drinks are really good. Yeah, the drinks are really good. <laughs> And uh, they had a great presentation with their food and we had a good time. Yeah, it was during Mm -hmm. COVID. So we can't really, the service was a little slow, but you Mm -hmm. know, I think everyone was facing like shortages in staff. Yeah, it was last July. I just- Last June, last June. I think the one thing I thought was that it was, I thought it was like a more higher end restaurant Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from when they um, did the preview or the, uh what's the they showed it they showed it um they had an episode there on last Um, season yeah yeah, last season um so I was a little okay but it was and it's small but I mean but it was it was good it was fun Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. and the waiters were really nice (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so the guys meet up I guess this is just like the opportunity for the guys to kind of hash out what their issues are with their wives Mm -hmm. and so we I liked it yeah I like seeing them together because we rarely get like a segment with just the guys yeah and I think they should do it more because it was fun listening to them talk they had me cracking up especially Todd he was hilarious so I think they should do it more yeah it was Todd Ralph and Ross Mm -hmm. Uh, Drew's husband Sanya's husband and then Candy's husband of course right Mm -hmm. Uh, so Ross brings up that he wants another child uh, but, but first he talks about um how his whole family is living with them true. and they were like what but he was like no it's it's cool you know her parents are like my parents I've been with her for 18 years so he seems like he's cool with the whole family being there yeah you but know. you don't even want your own parents to be living with you for a year <laughs> I know <laughs> that don't really even matter but I mean that's good that he's cool with it because yeah that could cause a lot of issues in a marriage oh yeah definitely you know, your family is here your mm-hmm. family um and I'm not cool with it so. mm-hmm. but uh then he mentions you know he asked Todd about I guess Todd mentions having four he mentions getting a colonoscopy <laughs> yes, Todd, which was great yeah because they were like how old are they went like how old are you are you and Ross was like I'm 39 and then um uh, Drew's husband was like, I'm 39. No, no, I'm 38. So he's probably like, he's probably like he's 39. <laughs> I know. And then and Ty was like, I'm 49. And I went and got a colonoscopy. And it's good because like, you know, especially for Black women, we have a higher tendency to get colon cancer. So the age for Black women to get colonoscopy, colonoscopies is 45. Uh, which is the age that every woman should get their first one. Then you don't have to do it for another 10 years unless, you know, something abnormal comes up. So I think it's important. And he brought it to light, which I think is good. That don't be afraid, just go and get it done. (laughs) Yeah, he he said it's because he has small children and he wants to be there for them. Um, So then Ralph, Ross asked him, how many children do they Mm -hmm. have? He lets them know that they have four all together. And that's when he says that he wants to have another child. They have one and they want mm-hmm. to have another. He wants to have another child, but Senya is not really on board with it. Uh, then he asks how busy is Candy and how that, what impact does that have on their relationship? Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, Todd is like, not easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think that the children thing is going to come up later in Senya's or mm-hmm. continue to be part of their storyline right yeah um especially since yeah they're probably getting to the age where they you know probably would want to make a decision on whether yes, they're yeah. going to continue to have mm-hmm. children so uh then that's when uh Ty starts to clown <laughs> clown him hard <laughs> on the 
in this situation and he's just kind of stumbling over his words that sounded so <laughs> ridiculous so ridiculous and Todd wasn't trying to hear any of the Ross any of it and was just like showing him how stupid he sounded and how unbelievable it was it was just like everything he was saying was just like dude just stop admit that you did something wrong and we can move on you know yeah and you're going to continue to have issues at home if you just don't admit like that that was wrong Mm-hmm. whether your mm-hmm. intentions were malicious or not like just say like I can understand why you're not comfortable with that mm-hmm. and I won't put you in that situation again <laughs> and I'll cut off all contact with her all contact because I don't need yeah. to have anything to do with her right exactly uh, we go to Marlo's house and we see her again in her Monty role Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so she's in the kitchen with her assistants and her her um, nephews one of her Mm -hmm. nephews is going to homecoming right and she's showing him how to dance at homecoming which is not the way anybody's gonna be dancing at home (laughs) (laughs) her assistant was saying like they're gonna be playing ratchet music they are not gonna be ballroom dancing (laughs) but what did we forgot to bring up when her and um candy met was that she was talking about like, you know, when she first became a Monty, she was riddled with guilt and she didn't know how to handle the situation. So she Mm -hmm. just threw gifts and gifts and gifts at them. And now she feels like they're a little bit spoiled because she bought him a $1,200 suit for homecoming, which is a bit much for a ninth grader. Mm -hmm. And, um, And so Candy made an interesting point. She was like, you know, why do we have to deny our kids? Why can't we teach them to be, you know, self-sufficient, hard worker, um, and not have to struggle in order to reach that level? And she, because she had mentioned before that she does give stuff to her kids, and but they still are hard workers, but she doesn't feel like she has to deny them, especially when white people don't do that, you know? So why do we feel is that everything has to be a struggle? You know, and I thought that was a really interesting point. And I guess it's partly it's because everything is a struggle. Not everything, most things are a struggle for us. So it's hard to, you know, leave that behind and also um, feel, um, not feel guilty about having um, more, you know, mm-hmm. so. Especially if that's how you grew up. I think like when we get to the generations that didn't grow up struggling, mm-hmm. it'll be for them to raise their children mm-hmm. without that struggle mentality but right. I mean right now you know a lot of people in our generation or Candy's generation um did grow up struggling mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and so it's, it's about balance but yeah I mean I definitely see her point and I think mm-hmm. as long as you're instilling those values and letting them know that they have to work hard for whatever they have then it should be okay right yeah yeah but you know mm-hmm. there are a lot of white kids that are on drugs and stuff and you know that don't so it's just yeah I don't know. yeah <laughs> but he did look nice in that suit so <laughs> our nephew did they're they're cute little boys they are they are um and then last but not least in this episode we get to Ralph and Drew's date mm-hmm and again and he did he did her up he it he was, was treating her like a princess i will really, get it to ralph it's, it was very nice Extreme, um, yeah but he said that you know he wanted to do the dinner on the rooftop to show her that no other woman can come close to her and mm-hmm. i'm like that's not the way you show her mm-hmm. i know <laughs> and guys don't understand that is not the way that you show and her she she's not getting that analogy at all so <laughs> it's just yeah the way you show her is to not entertain assistants that are mm-hmm. flirting with you. <laughs> right. Yeah. And not, and not lie about with it. Her about it, you know, when she has an issue with it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to make her feel secure in the relationship. And that's not by giving her a nice dinner. Right. He doesn't want to let go of that relationship. And that's what the problem is. That's the real problem. He doesn't want to give it up. You know, Why? so <laughs> what are they doing? That's the question. <laughs> 
<laughs> so instead he shot and he, it was like a fairy tale. It was like Cinderella. I mean, the dress looked great on her. It was, that's the first cute dress she's ever worn. And um, it's what he provided for her, right? Oh, I know, I know. But he, he did a lot. So I have to give him credit for that. But it would have been better if they had resolved their issue. If mm-hmm. he had been honest with her mm-hmm. and not try to gaslight her every second of her life, then it would have meant a lot more, you know? Agree. Mm-hmm. Agree. Yeah. So it basically ended up in tears. And- yeah, and he was <laughs> like being so mean and ridiculous to her. Like he was like, I just want this to be an easy dinner. But then he was making it difficult. You know, so he's just like a really horrible person. I don't know if he's putting it on for the show, but he seemed like a petulant little, you know, bitch. He seemed like a bitch, like a baby. I I couldn't, I couldn't take him. He referenced a marriage counselor and said he was going to schedule an appointment for her to go to the marriage counselor so that she can learn how to communicate whatever it is she needs to communicate with black men. Oh, yeah. Communicate with black men so that she can get her point across to him. Right. And, you know, she said she would do the same for him. Yeah. So I was like looking up to see who this Dr. Ken was. You know Dr. Ken? I didn't remember him and he doesn't look familiar to me, but what, isn't he the one that was also helping Mimi? Oh, maybe. Yeah. I think when I saw his Twitter. It was, he said, they said that he was on real Housewives of Potomac and married to medicine, but well, he, maybe, he possibly maybe was a different one. Let me look at, so you saw him. Mm-hmm. I saw his Twitter profile picture. But uh, he he added um, Ralph and Drew today and said, um, let's talk. I think that's what he said. Let's talk. Oh, really? Let's talk soon is what he said. So I guess he watched the show and, you know, kind of saw that they were having some issues with communication. But I mean, communication is hard in any type of relationship, especially mm-hmm. hard in a marriage. So Right. That's one of those things you have to kind of work through. Right. Oh, no, this is a different guy from what I was thinking of. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely have to work through it. And they definitely shouldn't be talking about their sessions on TV, you know, throwing it at each other, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, Yeah. I think she said something like, oh, Dr. Ken said you were a maniac. (laughs) Yeah. Well, actually, after he said that Dr. Ken said that you like to throw jabs. And she's like, well, Dr. Ken said that you're a maniac. And then he got really pissed. <laughs> and I'm like, what kind of doctor is this that's like, because <laughs> that is ammunition, you know, like, right, you know, if right. someone validates you, someone yeah. that party validates you, it's coming back up in a fight. <laughs> Especially if it's a doctor, yeah. a psychiatrist. So you must be a maniac. I wonder like what he does. Cause remember she said like when the anger comes out, it's bad. So he must get like really angry. I know? mean, wasn't he angry when he left for Tampa? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's unacceptable. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah. So this is going to be their storyline for the season. Yeah. I hope but kudos you- to Drew. Cause she kept on eating. She was like, I'm not going to let. She came right back in. <laughs> Sat back there. I'm not gonna let this good food go to waste. Good. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't blame her. I would have actually slid his glass of wine over closer to me. <laughs> right. I would have had two glasses of wine. Right, exactly. <laughs> and call the car to pick me up later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that was season two. Yeah, that was a good episode. A lot happened. Like you said, it was jumping That's around and around, but I don't mind it. You know, I'm, I think things was probably the storyline should probably start to gel more. Um, as the season goes on yeah I hope so but um Mm -hmm. until next time guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe join us on Wednesday for married at first sight decision Mm -hmm. day we're excited about that yes (laughs) (laughs) I'll talk to you later Bye. bye